Good. Well, <clears throat> I'm here uh, in the Tanner Gallery with Mr. Tanner, artist friend of mine. Um, so today I just want to uh, kind of introduce you to people and kind of go over your history, talk about your work. I got a little list of questions and whatnot that we can uh, run through and go over. Um, so to start off, let's go into your history as an artist. Um, when did you realize that you were an artist or started doing artwork and, and uh, started taking it serious? When I started taking it serious or when I when first knew I knew? Yeah, when you first just became an artist and Man, uh, whole life. It's kind of hard to say because every job I've ever had, I've always done artwork and mm -hmm. I've always had that as a goal to make my living for my art. So you've had jobs as an artist doing artwork before? No, I mean painting? like just when I was bartending or um, working in a hospital. Uh, um, one of my first jobs was in a a pizza shop, you know, it's uh -huh. like I still would go home and do artwork and that was kind of my dream was to make my living as an artist. Right, right. So, yeah, it's always been with me. Um, what age did you start, like, painting on canvas? <sighs> canvas, um, it was all just paper, I think, from what I remember until I was probably, like, 20 years old. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, are you born and raised here? Where are you from? I'm from, uh, it's like two and a half hours from here. It's a really small town in Alabama. Okay. And when you came out here, was it to pursue this art career? That was definitely in my mind, from what I remember. Um, but I, I used to come here on weekends and stuff with my best friend and like we were really young and we were just come here to party like everybody else uh -huh. but we'd be kind of worn out by sunday morning mm -hmm. and i remember walking through jackson square like on a sunday morning and i saw the artist out there and i was like man that would be a dream come true uh -huh. um but i really didn't think that was possible even to work in jackson square right um just had a pretty low self-esteem and uh, so yeah, um, when I first moved, I mean, before I even moved here, that was just something I thought was just be a dream job. Right, right. Yeah. That's kind of how it worked for me too. I never knew this world existed inside of this neighborhood called the French Quarter. Yeah. <clears throat> like the whole art district, which is kind of Royal Street and then the yeah. square. And when I started coming out, like, Seeing that, I was like, holy shit, these people are making a, a good living doing this. Yeah. You know, I didn't even know about it. So uh, once I found that out, I was like, oh, I got to get out of here. I got to get here. You know, I have to be in here. Yeah. So um, what year, how'd you start? You started off in Jackson Square, then moved into the gallery? Yeah, I mean, I was in Jackson Square for like 12 years. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, people always say, I'm asked this question all the time, like, you know, is having your own gallery, is that your dream job? I'm like, no, because it was, it was a dream that I was never, I, I could never have imagined owning my own gallery uh -huh. because, um, my parents, uh, discouraged me from doing art from the very start. Hmm. Um, it's, it's not that they had bad intentions, it's that, uh, like I remember when I was five years old, like I can tell you exactly, I can tell you exactly the spot in our backyard where we were, my dad and I were walking out into the garden and uh, we were walking through the gate to the garden. I just remember him saying, have you decided what you're gonna be when you grow up? And I said, yeah, an artist. And he said, well, you can't be an artist. The only artist that make any money is a dead artist. Mm. 
I was like, I just, I never liked my dad, to put it, to put it, to put it lightly. Yeah. And uh, I think him saying that just, it's like, from that moment on, it's like, I'm going to show you. Right, right. That gave you the fuel. Yeah, it did the opposite of what he thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, when other kids were doing their homework at night, I was in my room drawing mm -hmm. yeah. and lying to my parents, tell them I was doing homework. But yeah, yeah. same with me when I was a kid. Instead of doing schoolwork, I was drawing. Started off drawing Simpsons and Turtles back yeah, in the eighties, yeah. <clears throat> and then uh, got into high school. And instead of doing work in the classes. Me and a buddy of mine was making our own comic book. Oh yeah, and I, I some kind of I guess they just let me graduate. There's no fucking way I graduated. Same here. You know, um, so I did that whole scenario and then um, got into tattoos and then got into the art at the same time, realizing I could paint on canvas, actual paintings, because I always thought a painting you had to do like flowers and vases and shit. Yeah. And then my eyes were opened to like, oh, you can paint just whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's art. And so when I started diving into that, I just went head first and uh, just took it from there, you know? Yeah, I remember every year my, like the school counselor, uh, I mean, I did great in elementary school because there was a lot of drawing and painting and that. Mm -hmm. But when it got more serious, like middle school and like high school, like every year the counselor would call my parents in and like, yeah, your son's failing. <laughs> I'm like, What's he failing in? Like, kind of everything but art. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, they're like, he's got to bring his grades up, you know, this, sec this next semester. He's going to have to repeat a grade. And I would hear that. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I don't want to be in school any longer than I have to. And I would pull my grades back up to like a, a C to where I would just skim them by. Right. I really don't know how I graduated, but and you know, without, skip, without going back a grade, but I did. Right. And you know what's crazy is like uh, me and you both had the same thing. So it's like there's something about us or that's, there's something in our DNA that that's what we are going to do, right? So it's like why isn't there a setup? instead of doing that schooling that we're not gonna use and let us use what we're really doing, like art, and let yeah. us go full force into that and, and build that career. I mean, I, I, I really, well, I really do wish I had paid attention more, but um, my thing was, I was just being bullied to death. Yeah, That was part of the problem. I was too terrified to, uh, the only thing I could do was draw. It was the only thing that kept my attention enough to, to take me out of reality, uh, studying to do it for me, you know, um, there was bullying. That was a major thing. And just the fact that, um, it just didn't interest me that much, mm -hmm. but you know, you know, all this stuff is useful in life, you know, you tell my school stuff. Yeah. 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 I mean, some, some of all it, of it, yeah, but yeah. some of it. Yeah. Yeah. But as a kid, I was thinking, I'm never going to use this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck all this shit. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. And that's what I try to show my son, you know, it's like he's picking up these skills that he could use as an artist in many yeah. different ways, graphic design or painting or uh, making something. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> those are things you just, you're not going to pick up in school. Um so it's valuable to, to add those tools to your belt. You know, um, I know people that I went to school with that went to college, paid money, got debt. And some of these people can't even get those jobs that yeah. they tried to go out and get, you know. So yeah. um, and then uh, at what point did you uh, get into this gallery here? So that, that was really odd uh, the way that happened. So when I was in Jackson Square, um, they, Jackson Square was not what I had imagined it to be. When I, before I moved here as a kid, or I was a 20 year old, like I just imagined it as a big happy family and 
when I got out there, I tried to make friends with everyone. And, you know, some people are really nice, but mm -hmm. the people that actually run the place, the, the artist committees, yeah. man, they're just terrible, just vengeful, yeah. jealous people. And no matter what I did, like I did temporary tattoos. Yeah. Okay? And the reason I did temporary tattoos, I saw that the other artists at Mardi Gras, Halloween, football games, they all put their artwork away and they all brought out face paint. I'm okay. like, oh, okay, well, I love tattoos. What if I did that full time? And, um, you know, I was trying to sell my paintings. I didn't do very well my first year out there selling my paintings because, um, it was like a guy with schizophrenia painted everything. It was like, I remember at one time I had like a, a still life of a, a eggplant and a pea and the next two would be the psychedelic portrait of Charles Manson. You were just trying anything to see what would catch on to give you a direction? I don't really know that that's it. It's just everything interests me. Okay. And it's the same way today. Okay. Um, so people would walk up and they'd be very confused. Right. And be like, well, you painted this? I'm like, yeah. Like, well, who painted this? I'm like, I painted everything here in front of me. Mm -hmm. And they would just keep on, well, who painted this? I'm like, like I said, I painted everything in the section in front of me. And they're like, you didn't paint this. I'm like, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, you've got a lot of different styles. I'm like, yeah, but I painted all of it. I'm the know? same way. Like I would do something that looked... <clears throat> Like something out of a comic book, and then I'd do something. I would do photorealism. Um, and when I was doing the photorealism, um, I had this this lady, this elderly lady. She was a nun, I believe. She was an artist out there. And I went to get lunch one day, and I come back, and she was out there with a a literal magnifying glass, looking at my paintings. And I said, "Can I help you?" And she said. And she said, you're not allowed to sell all photographs out here. I'm like, that's a painting. She said, no, it's not. I'm not an idiot. I'm like, what? Cops came to see me the next day and what? told me I couldn't be selling photographs. I'm like, look, <laughs> here's my freaking, what I'm working on right now. And the cop's like, that's not a photograph? I'm like, you see it's halfway finished. No, it's not a photograph. That's why it's called photorealism. Huh. They called the cops to me for that. And then, uh, you know, I had this guy come up to me and ask me one day directions to a tattoo shop. And I said, oh, I stand around the corner. And he just jokingly said, he's like, hey, you ought to get your paints out and uh, paint one on me, see if I like it. And that just, that just clicked. And I was like, man, I bet that would go over really well out here. And so I started researching, like, special effects paint that they use in Hollywood and stuff. And I found... Uh, this paint and I would add my own stuff to it, just like natural ingredients to make it last longer and make it look more realistic. And that's what I did for the next 10 years. Hmm. The 10 years I did uh, temporary tattoos out there. Wow. And they hated that. They absolutely hated it because I mean, they were sitting around working crossword puzzles and I had like 30 people around me. Right, right. And jealousy. Oh man, they were so jealous. It's I couldn't a, get over it. Yeah, it's a pretty. I I haven't worked on the square, but I know about it. I've been out there enough. I know enough people. I've heard enough stories. It's a pretty rough uh, environment, and it's also pretty rough because these people. You got to wake up super early to go get yeah. your spot on oh that fence. God. Five you gotta, in the morning. You got to drag your art out there, set it up at five in the morning, leave it. Or sit there all freaking no, morning. You have to, you know, back then, you had to stay with it. Yeah. If you left it, somebody would come by and take your sign. Somebody could steal that shit. It yeah. could rain. You know, like, it's a rough uh, it thing is. to deal with. But, I mean, I, I would have enjoyed it a lot if they just had left me alone. But they called the cops to me about my sign. Um, and a cop came out there like, hey, you can't have a sign out here. I'm like... Every artist out here has a sign. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, but they're just hanging on the fence. I'm like, all right. So I took it off his platform. I put it up on the fence. They came out a couple days later. Like, yeah, you can't have a you can't have a freestanding canopy out here. 
And I'm like, it's the same thing as an umbrella. And I'm like, yeah, but it's freestanding. Like, show me the law. And I had I had to I had to retain an attorney the entire time I was out there. The entire time. Uh, this one officer came up to me <clears throat> and uh he said, You're gonna have to leave and you're gonna have to leave right now or I'll arrest you. What? And I'm like, for what? He's like, you've got to have hot and cold running water and solid walls. I'm like, you understand these are not tattoos. These are he's like, well, your sign says tattoos. I'm like, oh god. It says unreal tattoos. Yeah. Okay. Unreal means something, okay? Yeah. It's a but anyway, he's like, Well, you're gonna have to leave. I'm like, well, show me the laws. And he's like, Well, I don't have to show you the law. And uh, I'm like, all right. He's like, I'll get a copy of the law about on Monday. And I'm like, all right. Well, I'm going to expect that phone call. He said, well, here's my pager number. This was back when people actually used pagers. And uh, and so on Monday morning, I paged him. And uh, and then he called me back from the president of the artist committee's home. They showed up on caller ID. And he called back, he's like, this is Officer Holtzclaw, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy you shut down over the weekend. Why are you calling from the, the president of the artist committee's house? And he literally stuttered. He's like, uh, well, uh, I'm, 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 I'm over here getting the laws that you wanted. I'm like, wait, you're a cop and you're at the president of the artist committee to get the laws? That doesn't make any sense. That was just really sketchy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I had to get the attorney to go after them, and it was just ridiculous. The whole time I had to keep an attorney. And yeah, I've I've heard some stories about out there. Also, another thing crazy about working out there, the shit you see out there on that square, the experiences, entertaining, some, some wild shit, right? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. heard some stories. I've seen some stuff. One time there was shootings out there, right? Yeah, I, I've, I've saved a couple people's lives out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets wild out there. So you did that, then you then you get into the gallery. Mm -hmm. right? Well, what happened, their last, their last effort to get me out of there, when I started painting the trees, like this stuff that you mm -hmm. see here. This started, when I started out there. Yeah, when I started painting these, so they take me like three months to paint one because I use a little tiny brush. It's like three hairs. Mm -hmm. So you can't sell... You can't sell a painting once every three months and make a living, mm -hmm. whether you're in a gallery or on the streets. Not gonna happen. So I had to make giclees. I had to make reproductions to make a living. That's not allowed out there. They hated that. And I'm like, look, I read the law. My attorney read the law. The only rule is that it has to be on a plain surface. And what is that? They try to get me that with the tattoos. It's like, what is a plain surface? Your skin's a plain surface. And so that was the only thing in there. So, um, so I took the city to court, me and two other artists, we took them to court and we lost. And, um, and so I just had to go around looking for a gallery that would take my work. And I noticed there were a lot of artists that owned galleries. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a savings or anything. And, uh, um, and I came up to this place, and I just remember, I mean, it's a fraction of what I'm paying now, but at the time, it's like the street artists are like, wow, that's a lot of money, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, it was really scary, but I ended up doing it, obviously. And in um, my last day in Jackson Square, I took toilet paper, and I took a, a marker, and I said, this is original art. And I hung a <laughs> strip of toilet paper on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> because like, you know, just because it's original doesn't mean it's good. Right. And then after that passed, you had, you had people out there doing quick originals for five or ten bucks so they could eat to yeah. have a sandwich for the day. Yeah, I see what goes on out there. Yeah, and now I think it's changed to where they allow it now. They allow yeah, there's all kinds of shit out there now. Yeah. <clears throat> and then as soon as I left, you know, it's um this was really frustrating 
is uh, as soon as I left, as soon as they hear that someone leaves the, the street and they get a, a gallery, they immediately copy you. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of that, too. It, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Every other artist was painting black trees. Oh. Trying to do exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't copy anybody, you know, when I came up with this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it just, it took me so long to come up with my own original ideas. I highly, even if they copy, there's no fucking way they're going to do it to this level. Well, that's, like... that's part of the problem, though. The, the thing is, the thing is, when someone sees the same thing over and over and over, and then they see yours, it's not original anymore. Right. It doesn't look original right. to them. Like, oh, he's just another person painting the black trees. That kind of happened with that uh, Michaelopolis guy, Michaelopolis. Oh, my God. He's been ripped off so many times. You see so many of those ripoffs that people just say, oh, that's the um, shotgun paintings. They don't even know who the artist is anymore. Yeah. They're just everywhere, and there's so many of them. Yeah, and uh, it's... Uh, and, man, we go after them, too. It's like it really... Not much upsets me as much as that. Yeah. You know, like, the whole time I was in art school, you know, we were copying, we were copying the old masters, uh -huh. you know. Nobody's trying to pass it off as theirs. We're just copying them to learn how to draw and, and paint like the masters did. And my complaint to my teacher, I was just... I was constantly complaining about this. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting good at copying, but I feel like a copy machine. When do I get my own ideas? He's like, well, it'll come eventually. And I was really losing hope. It was like, I just wasn't in touch with that. Like I was getting skilled, like a carpenter, like I could paint whatever you told me to paint, but none of it came from my own head. Right. And so... You know, I went through a lot of things, like, really bad things happened, like losing my mom, my dad, uh, end of a long-term relationship, and basically homeless when I came up with this. Hmm. Uh, and I was just staying with my ex, who I just broke up with, yeah. and uh, found this little place for like $700 a month. It was really a crack house, honestly. That's the house you own now, right? I ended up eventually buying the house, yeah. Yeah. But at the time, I mean, it was it was awful. <clears throat> now, I didn't have anything. This um, school, was that Arts College? What was that? Uh, the New Orleans Academy of Fine Arts. Is that the one on... Uh, is it magazine. Magazine. Yeah. Big yeah. building. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Okay, yeah. cool. And uh, the founder of the school, Alcyclus, um, he was my main teacher. And uh, um, I was always asking him a million questions about, you know, color design. And I'm like, well, how many times can I take this class? Because I, I, he's like, you can take this class the rest of your life. And he's like, I'll just sit you a, a place in the back and I'll give you special instructions. He's like, he's like color and design. It's like math. He's like, it's endless. It's like. You can always learn more about it. Would you say that going to this school um, enhanced what you're doing in these paintings, like oh, how yeah. like technical it is? Because I, I'm a yeah. I'm a video of these things and maybe take pictures because people can't get an idea of your work like by looking at this. They do not photograph. <laughs> but if you see this stuff in person, it's like highly, highly fucking like detailed and and intricate and uh, it's almost like a fucking computer made it. To me, it's like a graphic design but it's a fucking painting. It's, it's, it's literally perfect. every day when people ask, are they digital? Yeah, like it could pass <laughs> off as a digital but I'm not sure what it says about me, but So, uh, would you say that that schooling uh, enhanced your skill level to get to making these things like this? Not that it looks digital, it's just that, but yeah. It gave you. I learned skills. a lot about. I learned a lot about atmospheric perspective, which is probably the main thing that I focus on. 
do you think if you didn't do the school, these paintings would be more uh, raw, choppy, messy, not as precise? I think that's my personality. You know, I think they would still be... you just an intricate type of person. Yeah. Details. Yeah. Okay. I, I think they'd be that way no matter <clears throat> what. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was another thing I wanted to... Um, I had a topic written down about like um, how different... You know, I was across the street from you with a gallery. We both sell paintings and what other stuff. But like... Uh, how different we are in the process of what we do, the things we use, the time it takes, all of those things. But the end result is you got a painting for sale. I got a painting for sale. You know, yeah. just totally different uh, process. So different. Way different process, way different mind frame. And at the end of the day, we both have the same business and selling the same product, which is a art. I think about that a lot. You know, it's um, pretty wild. And if you walk down this street or in the square, it's everything like, wow, this person's doing this and making a living and doing this. Yeah. Everything's different for the most part. Because, uh, like, I think about just you as my friend. Like, I think about, like, a lot of things that you go through emotionally in your head. Like, we're very similar. Right, right. Uh, and, like, your artwork, like, you're, you can do something in an hour that would take me a week or two weeks to do. Right. And that has always amazed me. But our work is very, very different. Not just the technique, but the subject matter. Yeah. Everything's so different. Mm -hmm. But yet, like, I'd be on the sidewalk and I would see people walk by and they would glance over at my work and then be like, oh, that's nice. And then they'd look at yours and be like, oh, wow. And they'd go in your gallery and it's like, well, that's kind of cool, you know? It's like, it was cool to see certain people I used to I used to always try to like guess like what they're gonna go with. I felt like me and you were just like since we we're directly across the street like it was always like people were gonna pick one or the other yeah and sometimes they pick both they'd go in mine and yours yeah um but they'd go in your gallery and they'd just be fascinated with your work and I know they see my work mm -hmm. but it was, it was like it was nothing it was like they were, had no interest in it at all yeah, and uh, I always thought that was really cool that you're working your butt off, I'm working my butt off, and we're both getting the same results. We're getting like you made a lot of people happy with your artwork, mm -hmm. and so have I. And I discount that a lot, but at the end of the day, it's we're both making people happy, you right? Know? Right, and we're both. Uh... We're both surviving in the world. You know, we have a place to sleep. We get, we buy food. We're just moving along through this process of life, selling art. Yeah. But in a much different process, and a, you know, much different types of art. You know, to me, that's interesting. You yeah, know, it is to see like the the paintings you do. You like, I'm working on this. It's going to take me about four months. On <laughs> yeah. four months. Like, bro, I'm about to crank out 40 paintings in four months. <laughs> I know. That's why I get a little jealous when I see <laughs> you and other people like you that can paint so fast. And and I have an addiction. Like, and it's been like this for many years with this social media shit. I'm addicted to, if I don't have a painting to post every day, Monday through Friday, I start getting the itch and I get anxious I'm just addicted to I get home and, and work. I got three or four different projects up for boom, 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 boom. And after 19 years of doing this, uh, I've figured out ways and methods to go faster and speed up my process and uh, my style. Yeah. And me, I like raw, messy, gritty. I'll fucking scratch some shit with some sandpaper spaz out with some markers yeah. and crayons 
so it's totally different worlds here. And see, when I do that, it just looks like someone's fast out. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't look right. You know, and um, people remind me all the time because I don't pay attention. But they'll message me and tell me like, hey, man, uh, your artwork, you know, it brings me joy or thank you for making stuff that's real with yeah. meaning. So they're viewing their view of what my artwork gives them. Yeah. And I'm just releasing my feelings, my emotions and the things I want to put out of my mind. Yeah. And I'm giving it to these people. Either they buy it or they just enjoy viewing it on social media. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. But uh, does that make you uncomfortable Do, when people compliment you? Does that make you uncomfortable at all? No. When people tell me, like people tell me, like they message me or tell me in person like these extremely nice things and... and um, what do you call that? Not praise, but like, uh, what do you call the word? Like, uh, compliment yeah. you. Um, when I read those things, I'm like, wow. I'm like, it makes me really appreciate these people more and more. I was talking to a guy last night and I posted a route we're going to be traveling. So every time I do these trips, I'm like, Anybody on this route, you want to save on shipping, I'm delivering artwork. We can meet up, hang out. I love to meet people everywhere. Yeah. I got people all over the United States. These people sometimes offer me to sleep in their house. I've slept in their houses. Yeah. We hang out. We go eat dinner. <clears throat> These people become family. And um, last night, this guy, he was like, man, I really appreciate you, you know, uh, taking your time out to talk to me and answer questions and not many uh, artists or whatever is like that. And I was like, dude, I'm a person just like you. I'm just yeah. trying to survive and get through this life. Yeah. I, like at, at this point in my life, I have no ego. I've dropped that shit. I think everybody in their life had an ego and pride at one time, you know, and think like, nah, nah, nah. but for me, I don't look at myself as some anything. I'm just a person. And um, the fact, I always say this too, the fact that people in today's world can get on a phone and there's 5 billion things you could look at being thrown at you, trying to sell you, so many things, right? <clears throat> Clothes, cars, fucking everything. For these people to choose to take their money that they work for and invest and buy a painting or a print, a t-shirt with you or me out of the millions of other artists and stores. Yeah. And to me, that's fucking mind blowing. You know, it's like, yeah. And I just get to a level of, of being blown away by these people's support. I'm like, man, thank you so much. I, I, I love you. I appreciate you. Yeah. Without these people, I would be absolutely nobody. I would do. I would still oh, yeah. paint because I painted before I ever sold shit. I would still do it because that's what I do. But the, the fact that you could survive and make a living from these people's support, yeah, uh, I'm very, very grateful and thankful for these people. No, I definitely appreciate them. What I was talking about was the actual compliments. Does that make you uncomfortable? Because no, no, I like I. They, they give me a feeling of love. Like these people show love and it feels great. Yeah. I appreciate the shit out of that. Maybe I just, since I didn't get that as a kid, like. Yeah. Like I would stay up all night. Like I would stay up till three in the morning drawing. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> what, I, what I drew, I, I had these uh, oil pastels. <laughs> That's all I had was that and these big, pretty big pieces of, you know. Uh, tablets, paper, and I was obsessed with Kiss. Mm -hmm. I guess I just liked how colorful they were, and yeah. and I would do that, and I would do portraits. I would do portraits of people that didn't really exist, because mm -hmm. everybody would ask me, "Who are these people?" I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, and but every morning I would go to breakfast table, and I would like, "What do you think?" 
I showed, I was really proud of what I had done. And my parents always said the same thing. That's all right. Like, and so I was like, I was always trying to get something out of them more than that's all right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But as an adult, I can look back and I can see they were trying to protect me. They didn't want me to struggle yeah. trying to be make a living as an artist. I could see that. I, but, had, I had that happen to me. But today, like when someone compliments me, I mean, I dress kind of like a bum anyway, <laughs> but when I'm in the gallery and I'm kind of dressed like this, people assume I'm the, you know, handyman or something. Yeah. And all my employees, they know don't tell them who I am uh -huh. unless you feel like it's going to really make a difference in a sale. Yeah. And so people will come in and they'll be talking to an employee. I'll just be sitting there, you know, on the phone or taking a break from painting or something. And they'll ask the employee, like, are you the artist? And they'll just say no. And they don't lie. If somebody asks, was he the artist? You know, they never, they never do for some reason. Right. <laughs> but you know they don't lie but um, yeah it just makes me uncomfortable um, and um, the only thing I, like if it's something that over here like it's okay like I was walking down Bourbon Street of all places and these two guys were walking in front of me I was trying to get around them and the guy's like, hey, have I told you about that artist on Royal Street that I like? And I'm like, I was just trying to get around him. And uh, and he mentioned my name. I was like, oh, that's weird. They're talking about me. That that struck me as a, a true compliment. Mm -hmm. I, guess, I guess I feel like people are like just saying things to be nice. Like I don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I was talking about this same thing with Justin about how important it is to when somebody's doing something uh, in the artistic field, whether it's art, music, uh, creative stuff. Yeah, and you know them, or it could be a random person. How valuable it is to tell these people, uh, I'm proud of you. You're doing a great job. Yeah. You know, like that could give that person momentum to keep going, yeah. you know. Because when I watched these kids play the other night, I was like, Hey, I'm proud of y'all, what y'all doing. You know, y'all y'all keep going. You're not giving up. I'm proud of y'all. Yeah. So for those kids that might be like, Fuck yeah, that's you know. Yeah. It's important to compliment people. Yeah. But I really like criticism <clears throat> too, if it's like when I got to art school and my art teacher, he was very, um, he wasn't mean, but he was very blunt. And you'd, he would give you an assignment and you would bring your assignment and it was always on paper because they, you know, you just do these every day and you would have homework to do and uh, he'd pin them up on the board and he'd, he'd look at them and everybody would be, you could hear a pen drop and it like who did this <laughs> like somebody would raise their hand he's like what were you thinking <laughs> <laughs> and I see like I remember people just running out crying damn like he was just uh, he wasn't trying to be mean he just did not have much of a filter right but I love okay. that like I love that for once someone's going to Say something besides that's all right. Well, what about you know? what about this? This is a thing that I I think and I realize, and I tell people, art, an artist and an art career <clears throat> is one of the only things in the world. There might be other shit, but that has no rules. Yeah. There's not one, there's no uh, society, there's no fucking governing, there's no uh, league, there's no rules, there's no statistics. That's what always terrified me about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've kept some of my own statistics of stuff I've done, like I've sold over 60,000 pins, yeah. blah, blah, blah. 
But I tell people, there's no fucking rules to this. I could take this bottle and fucking melt it and, and glue it to the fucking canvas or sculpture it. That's my art. And if somebody walks in here and buys it for 30 bucks, I'm successful. Yeah. So, like, people's like, oh, I can never do this. I, can, I can't draw a stick figure. You can do anything and say it's art. And who's going to tell you differently? There's no judge. There's no yeah. ruler. So, actually, you know, and I've seen stuff with my own eyes. Crazy shit. Sell. You know, it's like, I'm talking about these people blow up. Huge. So, like, you have these technical paintings. This guy's fucking slop, slop. Like that Cafe du Monde thing you painted? Yeah, that's a great story. <laughs> that's a great story. So, there's this artist. I think his name was Danny Fox or some shit. And I like his style. It's real, like, uh, simple and messy. And I was telling David, I was like, dude, I want to paint something like this so bad. It just looks fun. I like the style. So we were Is that why it. you painted that? Yeah. Okay. So I followed that guy and I was like, this shit's awesome. I just want to do it to get it out of my system. Yeah, yeah. So Dave was like, fuck yeah, do it. So I was like, I know what I'm going to do. So I was like, I'm going to paint a fucking Cafe Du Monde scene. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going to knock this shit out fast. So I I grabbed some paint. Boom, 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 boom. Didn't have any pictures, right? Oh. To, I just know the color, the green and white scheme, yeah. the, the the square in the front, the horse. So I'm, I'm like almost done. I'm pushing maybe an hour on this thing. You walk in. <laughs> You're like, you look at it, you go, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like... Man, this is a masterpiece. Dude. <laughs> and you're laughing. You're like, come on, man. You're fucking joking me. And I was like, nah, bro. I'm feeling this shit. You know, like, <clears throat> and you're like, boy, get that shit out of here. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I said, this is going to sell. And you're like, yeah, right. You bet me something. You you said something. I forgot what you said. <laughs> but you're like, boy, if you, if you sell that something, I forgot. But I was like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I fucking finished it. I got a frame for it. I, st <laughs> I stuck that bitch on the wall. I really thought you were joking. And I saw it on the wall. It's like... I put that bitch on the wall. And it was about a week to two weeks later. <laughs> somebody was in town from San Francisco. They walked in. Scammed the whole gallery. And went straight to that. He's like, oh man, I just redid my kitchen. This would go perfect in there. And I was like, please buy it. Please buy it. I wanted it to sell just to fucking tell you it's sold. <laughs> and this dude bought it. Boom. Twelve hundred bucks. Jesus. And I, 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 I went when straight I came to, in to see like that, you know, when you told me it sold like some crackhead went in there and gave you three dollars for yeah. it. <laughs> That's just goes to show, like, you know. Uh, it's like everybody's gonna like something. Dude, man. I had a painting I did I was staying in Treme. In an apartment that was so fucking small. I had all my shit jammed in there. And I was painting in the size of a bathroom space, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> One night, I took this old fucking uh, canvas print. And I was like, man, fuck this. I'm going to just hang, do this for no reason. Bop, 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 bop. It was like a king skull thingy, right? With some cool blues and browns. Yeah. I threw that bitch in the frame. I did it in 40 minutes. Threw that bitch in the frame, boom. Threw it on the wall. Nobody knew it took me 40 minutes. So somebody in uh, Calabasas bought it. Did I ever see it? Yeah, uh, it was in there. Yeah. Yeah. Turquoise background, but it sold like that. I will say this, the Cafe Du Monde thing you're talking about. <clears throat> um, that's probably the most playful and happy I've ever seen you. But the crazy shit about that painting... Cause you were having fun painting it. I go to the fucking uh, I'm with some people after the fact, right? Yeah. They like, oh, let's go to Cafe Du Monde, get some beignets. They were from out of town, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Dude, I'm sitting in this fucking Cafe Du Monde. I look up, and the people that bust the tables. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. I look up, sitting at this table. And the fucking guy that's working there looks like my painting. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck, dude? No way. So in the painting, I got the guy holding the beignets and the coffee oh, yeah. and the tray with a cigarette hanging out of his really? mouth. Really? And I, 
I'm looking at this guy. I said, like, holy shit. I pull up the painting. I was like, look at this. Look at this. This guy <laughs> goes off to the side smoking a cigarette. Really? I was like, dude, this could, this is fucking crazy. You know? Hey, can we break for a second? Yeah. Because, uh, all right. I'm going to make sure this is... Luckily, we haven't had a lot of, like, uh, you know, bad people coming here and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just been more, like, ridiculous stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's shit I've experienced and seen and witnessed. A lot of these stories ain't good to tell on video. Yeah. You know, it's like... But people don't understand. There's, you know, how much of the population has never, ever yeah. been here. Yeah. To, to, but to live in here and work in here every day. Oh, you know what? So before I had this gallery, I was across the street. I shared a gallery with the guy for yeah. like six months before I got this one. And in Jackson Square, I had this little sign on, I, I made it on canvas. It was a gicle, and it just had my name. And I think at the time it said Tanner Original Art or something. And in the background, I had one of my kind of tree scenes. It was it was just a, a gicle on canvas, but I put type on it and Photoshop and everything. It was a sign. My name's really big on it. While well, this couple comes in and they are just completely drunk, mm -hmm. like, and the guy's like, "Yeah, how much is that?" I'm like, <laughs> "That's my sign." <laughs> how much is it? I'm like, "Sir, that's my sign." Uh, well, how about what do you think, honey? She's like, I love it. <laughs> Seriously, everything I got in here, you want to buy my damn sign? She's <laughs> like, I don't give a shit what it is. I want to buy it. Like, okay, thousand bucks. Like, I tell you what, because I have a conscience. I'm like, why don't you come back? Why don't you come back tomorrow? And if you still like it when you're sober, I'll sell it to you. Well, all right, we'll be back. I'm like, Jesus. Did he come back? <laughs> yeah. Did they buy the sign? They, wanted the fucking they bought the sign? Yeah, they wanted the sign. Holy shit. How much did you get for it? I don't remember. That was like... That was over 13 years ago. I think it was like maybe $200 or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Fucking sign. I think it was like $200 maybe. Yeah. Because like, well, I can make another one. But yeah. But it's like, why do you want my sign? <laughs> That's crazy, man. Um, so somewhere someone has my first sign ever why I don't know they have it I still have my two signs from both my shops and the sandwich board thing yeah I say I don't know why I just keep it you know reuse it yeah I don't know if I'll ever uh, never say never yeah who knows you know but I save it for just the uh, the nostalgia of it. Yeah. I still have my Unreal Tattoo sign. Yeah. I have the big one and I have a little one like this big. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, so some people uh, sent in some questions. Um, but I think we kind of covered these kind of questions already. It was about artists supporting each other and being competitive. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's more Jackson Square, but yeah. Now I tell you, in the gallery uh, business, I've gotten the opposite. It's just right, nothing but support. And in fact, if someone comes in and they don't like my work and they're looking for something, they're like, "Oh, what kind of stuff do you like?" And we'll send them. You know, we used to send them to you and uh, Antio Gallery or whatever, whoever we think they might like. Yeah, and we've had people do the same. Yeah. You know, it's been, I find the people on Royal Street on the galleries have been really supportive. Hmm. And I've never seen any, any competition or jealousy or anything. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I used to get that, like, uh, other places would send people my way because yeah. I guess they picked up on the vibe of the person. They're like, oh, you might like that guy's stuff. And they would send him yeah. to my spot, you know. You know, there's a reason. Uh, if you notice where Taco Bell opens up, it's always by Burger King and McDonald's. Yeah. And the reason is they know it all supports each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you notice you don't just see right. Taco Bell in the middle of nowhere. Right. Even if it's busy, they get around other fast food yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So even if there's competition, it's still not competition because the amount of people is going to supply it because everybody yeah. has a different choice. I just don't see it as competition. I see it as everybody has a different cup of tea. For me personally, I have a deeper, it's not just about making money. It's like, I want people to be happy. Mm -hmm. And like, if they'd be happier with your art than mine, I'd much rather see them get your art. Because mm -hmm. they got to live with that for the rest of their life, you know? Yeah. I don't want somebody to buy. And it's like, <clears throat> I've, I've had a couple people, well, actually I've only had one person that worked for me that was really high pressure sales. And I'm like, ooh, man, you got to tone that down a little bit. It's like, yeah, I'm getting the sales. I'm like, you're getting the sales, but... I, man, I don't want somebody to buy my work that don't, that don't yeah, you don't want to really love it. Force them. I want to make sure they buy it for the right reason. Like, yeah. I want them to like it. I yeah. love it. Yeah. But uh, he's good about getting a sale. Yeah. I mean, he he would. <laughs> I mean, he would he would get the sale. Yeah. But uh, it made me a little uncomfortable. Right. Because I, I don't want somebody to get home and like, why do we buy this? Oh, that dude pressured us. You know. Right. Now there is a, a difference out here on this street where some of these galleries are businesses galleries, yeah. where it's not an artist gallery. They're selling artist stuff from around the globe, yeah. the US, United States, as opposed to the amount of actual standalone artist galleries. Yeah, you know, there's a there's a difference in that I find too. Yeah. Um, I don't know what would what would be more. Is there more standalone artists or is there more business type galleries? I think they're all in all. There are probably more galleries that are selling, you know, curated galleries. Several artists yeah. work. Yeah, because there's not many independent owned galleries like where they're just alone. Well, I don't know how true this is. I've heard that there are more artist owned galleries here than anywhere in the United States. Hmm. But I, like I said, I don't know how true that is. Hmm. But there are quite a few. There's a few other spots in the United States that have uh, artist community things, streets like this. I've, yeah. I've been to a couple. There's one in Key West as an area. St. Petersburg has a street of, a long street full of galleries and artists. Uh, there's a spot in California where the Precincts have a spot. Yeah. It's a little community. New York. Um, where are Do you know anywhere else? Santa Fe uh, has a couple, a little area. But to where you can like make a good living off of art, you know? This one's pretty strong. Royal yeah. Street, the yeah. French Quarter, it's very yeah. strong for artists. Yeah. Um, New York. I don't know of any others. I don't really know. Because I'm always picking my brain, you know, thinking of spots to go to. Yeah. You know, for stuff like that. Yeah. And a, a lot of them are just galleries just sitting, always just sitting here in this suburb or, you know, this area. Yeah. Not around a whole lot of galleries. So I think that's what helps this place is all the people visiting here every day, every weekend. And this place has been established so many years and decades that it's like a given, you know, people dying to have a spot open here, you know, if you're an artist. So, and you just provide the, the quality of what people are gonna invest in and it's kind of a win, you know? Yeah. I experienced that myself. Well, uh, looks like we're about an hour into this. Uh, is there anything? How can people? How can people find your work online? Let's say people's gonna watch this video. How they find your work? Um, website is Tanner Gallery. Tanner Gallery. Mm -hmm. um, what are you? Are you big on Facebook, Instagram, all these things? Yeah, yeah. We're not very big on Twitter, um, but. Uh, Instagram's a little different. Um, that uh, the gallery director kind of runs everything else, but I I handle Instagram. Instagram is 
it kind of documents kind of like my I'm, I take photos around the city. It's more personal. A, a bit, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I take photos around around town, you know, and then uh, whenever I finish a painting, I'll do the painting, uh, and um, so it's a little bit of a mixture. But so the best place for them to go and see pictures of your work and say, okay, this is what this guy does, is your website. Or Instagram, yeah. Or Instagram. Or Facebook. <laughs> and on Facebook, it's what? Uh, it's just Tanner Gallery and Studio. Tanner Gallery and Studio. Yeah, yeah. And then Tanner, the website is? Uh, Tanner.Gallery. Tanner.Gallery. Yeah. Okay. And I'll add that on any captions and whatnot. Yeah. And um, if everybody wants to put .com, you can. You can do Tanner, uh, TannerGallery.com if you want, but either one leads there. Okay. Cool, cool. All right, well, uh, I think we had a great conversation here. Yeah, enjoyed and it. And hopefully, um, I hope I can send some of my people, introduce them to your work, and, you know. Definitely appreciate that. Vice versa. Yeah. Open their eyes to uh, each other. Yeah, So definitely. All right. I appreciate your work as well. Thank you. you know that. All right, well, that's it. All right.